Hi everyone, Namaste. Welcome on my channel and welcome to this next video of Sagar series. So as many of you have guessed it right, I am going to discuss about the Junagadh inscription uh, in this very video. And uh, this inscription is also like the previous two inscription, it's a kind of a prasasti. Okay, it, it is also a prasasti. Uh, prasasti, I hope all of you know, uh, basically as a genre of epigraphy or inscription, prasasti made a visible presence in India during the post-modern period. And uh, uh, we have seen that with the decline and disintegration of the modern empire, the whole political map of the subcontinent, it began to be dotted with many new ruling dynasties who were contesting with each other and who were proclaiming their superiority. Uh, and uh, that proclamation of superiority, it was also done via the mode of uh, these inscriptions as well, okay, uh, which emerged in the form of uh, prasasti. And these prasastis, they were like the early prasastis, they were inscribed on rocks, they were uh, mostly or stone tablets or even pillars. And later on, we also see that some of the royal charters or royal prasastis were also engraved on copper plates as well. We will discuss about them in the later on of this series. So, uh, these public orders, they came to be uh, uh, like uh, preceded by a kind of eulogistic description of the king's attainment in some poetic style, uh, uh, which was kind of like uh, the very uh, example or the very basic structure of uh, any prasastis. So, prasastis, they were, in a way, we can say they were the political text, okay, prasastis. They were, in a way, a political text uh, which were most of the time marked by some unqualified exaggeration and the courtly milieu of the postmodern period, it was instrumental in the beginning of the writing of prasastis for rulers. Uh, each of these texts, each of these political texts of prasastis, they engaged in the exaltation of a ruler and their primary functions was, uh, was also of that, uh, that of praise. Uh, there were three well-known processes of the period. Uh, the Hathi Gumpha inscription of Karavel, which we have discussed. Then the Nasik Prasasti of Gautami Balashri, we will discuss it uh, in the next uh, like segment. And then uh, we have this Junagar Prasasti of Ruddhagaman, which we are discuss karne wale hain. So these were three well-known processes of this very time period of early Christian centuries and the postmodern time period. Uh, there is also like... Uh, these all these processes they were completely different in their form and content but these had some very shared ideas okay some some very shared ideas which basically talks about the achievement of the kings and all now uh, in this uh, this junagar inscription if we talk about that so junagar inscription ka sabse pehle agar hum baat kare iske location ki ki what was the location uh, of of this very uh, inscription so uh, this inscription is inscribed on the western side uh, near the top of a rock bearing um, a set of asokan major rock edicts and another of gupta monarch skand gupta at junagar gujarat okay so you will find that uh, in this inscription that that rock you are seeing here you will find three inscriptions here the inscription of uh, asok then the inscription of ruddhaman jisko uh, hum discuss karenge and Uske baad, we also find the inscription of Gupta monarch Skand Gupta. Okay, the script of this very inscription is uh, is in Brahmi, and it is the first prasasti which was written in classical Sanskrit. Okay, it is the first prasasti which was written in uh, classical Sanskrit, and this prasasti was in prose. Unlike the prasasti which we have seen earlier, which had some mix of poetry, uh, this prasasti was in prose. Now, what was the purpose of this very inscription? Why this inscription was basically commissioned? So, the purpose of this inscription was to record the restoration of a modern period dam on a, uh, on a lake which was called as Sudarshan by Mahashatrap Ruddhagaman. Now, this dam was still in use, but it was badly breached by a violent storm. A violent storm came and it dismantled this uh, this dam. So the inscription, it was first edited by none other than James Prinsett in 1838 and it was republished in Epigraphia India by F. Heelhorn uh, and this inscription had in total 20 lines. 
If we talk about the summary of the content, that becomes important for us. Uh, so, this inscription gives us the history of the Sudarshan Lake when it records its restoration during the time of Mahashatra Pruddhadaman. The name Sudarshan is first recorded in the opening line of Ruddhadaman's inscription, uh, which says that Idam Tadakam Sudarshanam. That is this lake Sudarshan. So, ye naam aapko pehli baar yahi pe mil jata hai. Uh, the text also states that the work was carried out by the minister Suvisak. That he was successful in what he did is made clear at the outset itself where it is stated that this lake Sudarshan is now rebuilt in excellent con condition. So, the name of minister who overlooked this whole work, it was also given. Iske alama, this inscription also states that it was constructed by Vaishya Pushya Gupta, who was the provincial governor of Chandragupta Maurya. It was beautified by adding channels like uh, Pranalibhir Alamkritam. Okay, these were the adding channels. Pranalibhir Alankritam by Yavanaraj Tushasp, uh, who was the governor during the time period of Ashu. So, some adding uh, or adding channels they have been added here. Uh, by Yavan Raj Tushasp and then many years later during the reign of Ruddhadaman in the winter of year 72 AD uh, or sorry uh, the, uh, in the winter of year 72 that Sak era uh, in 150 AD there was a terrible storm which broke the uh, dam. Okay, It is said that uh, uh, clouds pouring with rain had converted the earth into an ocean by the excessive solen floods of uh, like two prominent river that is Suvarna Sikhar and Palasini. Uh, these streams they were coming from Urajayat or Girnar mountain. Okay, Girnar mountain. So, these the name of these two rivers also becomes important, which is given in this uh, inscription. Okay, and uh, though I have not mentioned it in the beginning, but I hope you guys are taking your uh, notes out of this very session. So, this is why you don't have to repeat it once again. You can see it in one place and you can see it in one place. And you can see it in one place. Okay, uh, moving on, uh, it uh, mentions that uh, this, uh, the storm, it actually, which was the most tremendous fury wifting the end of a yuga, it tore down hill tops, trees, bank, turrets, upper stories, gates and raised Palaces of, uh, of shelter, stones, trees, bushes and creepers, they lay scattered all over. So, it is mentioned that this storm was very uh, fierce and although precautions had been taken, the storm tore a breach of uh, 420 cubit long and wide and 75 cubit deep into the lake's embankment and all its water, it flowed out and the lake resembled now a sandy desert. So, your Sudarshan is वो इस स्टॉर्म की वजह से अब वो दुर्दर्शन हो गई थी दैट इज अगली टू लुक एट पीपल दे वर वेरी सैड दे वर वेरी लैमेंटेड बाय दिस टेरिबल इवेंट एंड द एक्सटेंट ऑफ द डैमेज इट लेट द काउंसलर्स मिनिस्टर्स एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑफिसर्स टू थिंक दैट द लैंड लेक वाज बियॉन्ड रिपेयर बट it is said, the inscription says that Ruddhadaman was bent upon to get the job done and in this respect he found his provincial governor of Anartha and Surastha uh, who was Suvisak, who was uh, the governor of Anartha and Surastha or Surastha to carry out this work. It is said that Suvis, uh, Suvisak, he was a Pahala and he was the son of Kulab. Okay, he was the son of Kulab. Uh, so, maybe his father was also in an important position uh, in your uh, Saka Empire. Now, he is praised as an exemplary officer, able, patient, self-controlled, upright, honest and not given to arrogance. The lake was reinforced and made three times as strong in length and width on all sides in a very short uh, duration of time. It is also said that the Inhabitants of the towns and villages, they were not oppressed by any kind of taxes or forced labor or any other extra imposition. And the inscription tells us that Ruddhagaman had all this done in order to benefit cows and brahmanas for a thousand years and for the sake of righteousness, dharma and fame, that is Kirti. Uh, you will also find a eulogy for uh, Ruddhagaman uh, which is included here, where his genealogy ke mein baat kiya jata hai where his father was mentioned as Jaidaman uh, and grandfather was Chaskan. Okay, 
grandfather was Chastan. Rudhudaman in this inscription has described as the lord of Akara, Avanti, Anup country, Anarth, Surashtra, Swabhra, Maru, Kach, Sindhu, Sovir, Pukur, Aparanth, Nishad and other countries. Okay, so it is said that Rudhudaman has defeated all these countries. Okay, and all these countries were, uh, were was under his uh, protection. He is also said to have destroyed Yodhyas who had become arrogant claiming to be the heroes by defeating all the Kshatriyas. Uh, Rudhadaman is also described as having defeated Satkarni who was the lord of Dakshinpat and he defeated Satkarni twice in fair fight but he spared his life only because he was a close relative. This inscription further says that uh, the towns, villages and markets of this king they were never troubled by robbers, snakes, wild beasts or diseases and his subjects were attached to him and as a result of his prowess he attained the goals of dharma, earth and calm. Okay, so because of his conduct he attained this goal of dharma, earth and calm. Iske, uh, calm. Iske alama aapka, uh, where we also find a poetic kind of description of Rudhudaman where he has been described as one who was distinguished by royal fortune right from the time he was in his mother's womb. He was also chosen by all the Varnas as their lord to protect them. He also had made vow never to kill men except in battle. Rudhudaman was also a very compassionate person and he reinstated various kings by raising his hand earned a strong attachment of dharma. He also had earned wide fame by his knowledge and practice of grammar, music and logic and other great sciences. Uh, this inscription also talked about him as a very skilled in the control of horses, elephants and chariots, in the use of sword and shield and in face to face combat, Rudraman was also generous in the habit because he bestowed gifts and honors on others and he showed respect to others as well. This inscription also talks about his treasury which was filled with gold, silver, diamonds, lapis lazuli and other kind of precious. Uh, things. The king was also considered as a composer of Sanskrit kavyas in prose and verse. He was also embellished with figures and proper use of words and possessing lucidity, uh, lucidity sweetness, vividness and brilliance in his poetry. Uh, uh, in ka physical feature bhi bataya gaya ki his body was marked by the most excellent marks uh, which is basically the signs of Vela and uh, he had been uh, described that his length, dimension, height, voice, the walking style, complexion, vigor, strength, everything was king-like. He also had reached many garlands at many various swamvars of many kings' daughters. So this was in, in brief the summary of uh, this your Junagar inscription. Now uh, let's talk about what was the, uh, what is the historical importance of this very uh, inscription. So, if we talk about this, the historical importance of this very inscription. So, the foremost importance of this inscription is that it gives us the history of a reservoir, a lake, which was built during the time of the Mauryas and which has been completely devastated uh, by a storm. Apart from that, the, the greater part of this inscription is devoted to the actual restoration of the lake which naturally give an occasion for a full eulogistic description and a record of the exploits of the ruler by whom it was accomplished. There is also a wealth of technical detail which is uh, like contained in this inscription. Details like the breach caused in the dam by incessant rains is said to have been 450 hast hastastas in length. Uh, or in ayat and 75 hastas in uh, uh, your uh, 75 hastas deep that is your avagat deep is like avagat so 450 hastas length and width that is ayat and vistin and 75 hastas avagat that is deep as a result of uh, the repairs it is said that uh, which was commanded by Rudhudaman the dam was not only built or rebuilt but it was made thrice as strong because the word or the expression which was good used it was trigun dhat dhatar vishtarayam okay trigun dhatar vishtarayam okay yeah so this was made three times stronger yeah, this repair dam is also uh, is said to be a well articulated structure. It was your Sushlisht Bandham with a strong bankments made of clay and stone lacking any gaps in length, height and uh, 
uh, your breadth. The dam itself had been erected on a site possessing a natural embankment, जिसके लिए अकृतिम सेतु बंद बोला गया, जहाँ पे एक natural embankment पहले ही सही था, and it was also provided by various conduits, drains and devices to take away the foul matters. Uh, उसके लिए uh, सुप्रति विहित प्रणाली परिवह मिधुविधानम this word has been used. So the planning of this supra local uh, irrigation project is clear from this description and this sort of construction and the need to repair in case of breach is suggest the importance of such irrigation project uh, for the state as the common people were affected and considering the arid nature of Gujarat such, uh, such projects are all the more important uh, for, for this very area. If we talk about the political importance of this lake, uh, so Politically, uh, this uh, in, uh, sorry, political importance of this inscription. So, uh, this inscription it also point towards the third phase, the entering of third phase of Sa Sak Satwahan struggle. Okay, the first phase during the Satkarni, the first, second phase it was Gautamipu Satkarni, and the third phase during the time period of Rudraman the first. We find that the third phase of this Sak Satwahan struggle it uh, it entered into this uh, during this time period, and uh, it is said. That uh, largely to the exploits of Rudraman the first, the Sak power has been restored in this very area. It is said that Rudraman he established his power over Akarvanti, Anup, Anarth, which was the uh, these were the northern part of Kathiawar area, Surashtra, this Kathiawar peninsula, Swabhra on on the bank of river Savarmati, Kach, it's your modern Kach area, Sindhu Suvir Sauve, that is lower Indus Valley, both to the east and the west of the Indus. Kukur, Aparanth and Nisad, these were the areas which were located somewhere between Vindhyas and Paripatra mountains. Uh, so these were the areas uh, which were under Rudraman the first. Ek aur interesting detail jo is inscription mein di gai, they were basically the five conquered areas which have been mentioned by your Rudraman the first in this inscription. Those areas, they were also mentioned in Nasik Prasasti as a part of Satwahan like the Kukur, uh, Vidab, Anup, Akarvanti uh, or Akar, okay, uh, around modern Sanchi Vidisa area. So these areas, they were the part of uh, uh, your Satwahan dynasty, which has been given in your Nasik Prasasti, but they were now the part of Ruddaman, which means that Ruddaman had taken these areas from the control of Satwahan. Now, one can easily infer that these uh, territories, uh, uh, which were earlier in the position of Gautami Satkarni, they were now under the Territory, uh, territorial control of Ruddhaman. So the areas uh, like uh, which were wrested from the Satwahan, uh, uh, this struggle is referred to in the inscription itself. Okay, in this inscription itself, itself Ruddhaman the first, according to the Junagar Prasasti, it uh, he twicely uh, defeated a king called Satkarni, the Lord of Deccan. Now, who was this Satkarni? We find an inscription from Kanheri. And Kanheri inscription uh, uh, like states that Satwahan king Vasishti Putra Satkarni married the daughter of Mahashatrap Ru. Now, unfortunately, the inscription is broken from here. But if this Mahashatrap Ru is same as Ruddhaman the first, then the defeated Satwahan king, this ko bar bar is inscription me bola gaya hai, and that uh, this uh, Satwahan king who was uh, uh, defeated by Ruddhaman the first, so he must be Vasashti put Satkarni only, who by the virtue of being the son in law of Ruddhaman, he was not uprooted by his Saka adversary because he was his son in law. That's why he was, though he was defeated, but he was not uprooted. It has been mentioned na, ki on account of the nearness of relation, he was spared. Okay, so he might be this Satkarni was Vasashti put Satkarni. The list also shows uh, that uh, the most of the provinces ruled by your Shaharat Nahapan had been recovered by Ruddhaman because it is also likely that many of the subordinate rulers once ruling under Nahapan and dispossessed of their respective territories uh, by Gautami Put Satkarni were reinstated by Ruddhaman. Okay, because he has been described as the restorer of the kings who had been deprived of their kingdoms. Okay, the restorer of the kings who had been deprived of their kingdoms. So it might be the uh, or the term which was used was Brastar Japrati Thapak. Brast Brast Raja Pratisthapak. Pratisthapak. That is uh, like 
he was the restorer of the kings who had been deprived of their kingdoms okay who had been deprived of their kingdom okay he also uh, conquered the yaudhayas it has been mentioned who are considered in the inscription as loath to submit rendered proud as they were by having manifested their title of heroes among all the kshatriyas he evidently regarded the conquest of this martial tribe as a great feat of valor okay so this also had been mentioned here uh, like uh, in, in in the inscription moreover uh, if we talk about yodhayas uh, who are described in the inscription as loath to submit uh, he, uh, these these yodhayas they were located in rajasthan area after they have migrated from the punjab region and they could be potential threat to durdudaman and thus this this whole conquest it made its mention in the official prasasti of the ruler uh, one more thing which is a kind of a homework for you guys we you will find in fact uh, if you see uh, the the video where i have discussed about the prayag prasasti or allahabad inscription of your uh, samudra gupta so there i have mentioned about the nine republics or nine tribes uh, you need to uh, get the list of those nine tribes and you also need to uh, know that in which areas these uh, uh, tribal or these republics they were active during the time period of guptas okay this is an important uh, th this could be an important question okay so uh, just just do that work just go uh, to that video and watch that video and there i have given you the list of nine such types which have been defeated by uh, your uh, samudra gupta and get the list of all those nine uh, tribes or tribal people and then just just read a bit about them that in which area they were active and all those if we talk about the economic uh, importance of this very uh, inscription so this inscription uh, was uh, like creation of a large scale irrigation project on the part of the ruler is always a viable program and in case of sudarshan lake it uh, already existed and rudraman repaired the severe breach that happened due to heavy storm so in connection with the construction of the dam huge amount of wealth was spent from his own treasury which was called as swasmat kosh and it is stated uh, in the epigraph that his treasury was overflowed with an accumulation of gold silver diamond beryl stones and other precious things rightfully obtained through the collection of taxes taxes like bali uh, or bali or sulk or bhag bali was a kind of tribute from the subjects sulk was ferry dues tolls duties on merchants and your bhag it was the royal share generally one sixth of the produce according to the same inscription it is said that rudraman he caused the rebuilding of the dam without oppressing the inhabitants of the town and country by kar kar was the periodical tax vishti which was the forced labor and this is for, uh, for the first time vishti has been mentioned in uh, ancient inscription okay uh, then we have prana that is the benevolence tax of non recurring nature these were the three kind of taxes which have been mentioned benevolence tax is like ki if uh, you are levying tax uh, for doing some public welfare work so these were the taxes which have been mentioned so uh, from this inscription we kind of get the idea of the system of taxation of that period okay not just that this uh, inscription also talks about uh, your uh, like the treasury of rudraman which shows that rudraman might have control over the diamond mines and other mining areas of uh, of of this region basically okay uh, some of the personal accomplishment of accomplishments of rudraman which have been mentioned here so this inscription it gives us an idea of the accomplishment of a ruler humne summary mein hi uske bare mein baat kiya ruler ko bataya gaya ki he was well versed in grammar music logic and other great sciences iske alawa as a as a king whatever things were needed in combat he knew about it following the common tradition of prasasties of the period rudraman ki physical attributes ke bare mein bhi bataya gaya we also learned that he was very handsome and jahan bhi jate the sab laddu ho jate the unke therefore the princesses of many countries were eager to marry him uh it is also uh, like uh, mentioned that ki this mahashatrap the title of mahashatrap uh, mahashatrap it was acquired by him it was not bestowed on him it was acquired by him this suggests that uh, he was very valorous and mighty that's why this title was acquired by him his prasasti also states that through his might the objects of piety wealth and pleasure they are duly attained 
इट इज ऑल्सो मैं धर्म अर्थ एंड काम दे हैव बीन अचीव बाय दिस रूलर धर्म अर्थ एंड काम जिसको पुरुषा लाइक स्मृति टेक्स में पुरुषार्थ का लाइक गोल माना जाता है ओके टेक इन टूगेदर विद मोक्ष दे मेड अप वॉट वी कॉल एज पुरुषार्थ और द गोल ऑफ ह्यूमन लाइफ सो दिस रूलर ही हैड अटेंड योर धर्म अर्थ एंड काम ही हैड अटेंड लाइक विक्ट्री ओवर दीज थ्री एरियाज ओके और दीज थ्री फेयर्स दिस इंस्क्रिप्शन अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट it also talks about qualities of a minister uh, so like we have seen in the summary it talks about suvisak uh, it it mentioned that he was a very uh, uh, like uh, a wise man who had knowledge about things which are temporal uh, or and also spiritual temporal like the things related to the practical or political uh, matters he was also able patient not wavering not arrogant upright and honest and uh, it is also interesting to know that it is pointed out that his work actually brought fame and glory to his master rudraman which uh, in a way shows that how uh, that, that the officer he was kind of a representative of uh, your uh, the ruler himself in this inscription the previous history of lake is also sketched briefly a kind of a vivid and striking account is given to wo kahin na kahin humko batata hai that the inscription was written by a person who had a very solid knowledge of language and command over language uh, it also talk about the fact that these kings wielded sovereignty over lesser rulers and the kings were also compassionate uh, beginning of a stereotype could be seen as most of these refer to gifts to brahmanas these inscription and exemption from the taxes so we get an idea of the type of taxes which were imposed at this point of time uh the prasasti also uh, reflect competition and contention of that time period because uh, gotami putra ko uh, like is inscription mein bola gaya hai ki he was the destroyer of the saka yavana and pahalo and he was the extinguisher of uh, hakrat line okay hakrat line which we know as shaharat line so this was uh, like uh, and there some some details which have been given in this inscription now if we evaluate this inscription like Uh, the the some other significance of this inscription so this inscription is uh, also significant guys as a historical uh, record because it's a like a historical record of uh, public works in ancient india okay because it it is like at a very basic level it is recording the you know, history of public works okay history of public works it is recording that and because of that it becomes this inscription is has as a very interesting place uh, nearly 500 years have already been passed when sudarshan lake the the dam that artificial dam was first created so it also talks about the history of or the tradition of uh, uh, like record keeping of public works it mentions the construction of a water reservoir named sudarshan uh, uh, by, by modern empire founder chandragupta maurya later during the time period of ashoka and then again during the time period of rudraman so according to uh, one scholar professor of south asian archaeology at cambridge university dilip chakravarty he mentioned that the inscription is an evidence of historical record keeping tradition in ancient india because rudraman otherwise wouldn't have known the names of people involved in the project uh, which was in 4th sen- 4th century bc because he was Uh, writing this inscription was in your second century AD, and he was talking about something which happened in fourth century BC. So, if this historical record keeping tradition was not there, he would not have known about it. Okay. So, uh, apart from that, the Junagadh inscription it also uh, like highlight the eulogy style Sanskrit from second century. Okay, because it is uh, uh, it was the first such inscription. okay it was the first such inscription which talks about uh, like uh, or or which gives us detail about any king in a very classical sanskrit language in a very chast uh, ch- uh, chaste sanskrit language which was more or less pr- uh, became prominent during the time period of guptas okay to aise inscription aapko इस इस लैंग्वेज में इंस्क्रिप्शन आपको इस टाइम पीरियड से बहुत ज्यादा मिलते नहीं है इसलिए भी ये जो इंस्क्रिप्शन है आपका कहीं ना कहीं ये आपके गुप्ता टाइम पीरियड के इंस्क्रिप्शन का प्रोटोटाइप हो जाता है ओके इट्स अ काइंड ऑफ अ प्रोटोटाइप ऑफ दैट दैट गुप्ता टाइम पीरियड इंस्क्रिप्शन Uh, although uh, further specimens of such poetic prasasties in sanskrit they are not found until the gupta era 
but uh, this inscription it becomes important for its language as well. Uh, according to uh, scholar Salomon, the inscription represent uh, therefore a turning point in the history of epigraphic Sanskrit. This inscription is also significant guys because uh, it gives us the antiquity of the town of Juna, uh, Junagar which was known as Girnar at that point of time okay? or Girinagar in 2nd century AD. The mountain Girnar it was also used to be called as Urjayat okay? which was mentioned in this inscription itself yeah so these are all the important facts related to this very inscription i hope you enjoyed this very session thank you so much for watching me uh, watching this video and uh, if you are new to this channel you should subscribe to this channel and uh, this slide is basically giving some of the social media details i'm on telegram uh, i have this dedicated group for the NTUGC net aspirants. Apart from that, I'm on YouTube. YouTube is uh, also Also, I'm on Instagram as well. If you search for Om Sishti, we will get you. Uh, this is the QR code. You can scan it in our Telegram ke group. Pe aane ke liye. Thank you so much for joining me here. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Take care.